now that we've learned about conditionals, I'm going to pivot and talk about these string functions. Um, as a reminder, a string is a data type made up of characters. Uh, I'm going to teach you some handy ways that you can work with strings and combine with conditionals, solve various problems that uh, are more complicated than what we've tried to solve before with programming. The first one we've looked at already in a previous lecture. So we saw and learned how uh, two equal signs in Python is how we compare whether two things are equal. So here, school one equals Howard, that's an assignment. The variable school one is being assigned the value Howard. Whereas in line three, school one equals equals school two is a comparison, checking if school one is the same string as school two. So exactly what I just said, it's really handy for cases where you want to compare strings in the condition of a conditional. So uh, our condition here can be if school one equals equals school two, print out these schools are equal, otherwise these schools are not equal. So maybe you can go over here. Um, and if I take this code, put it into our file and I run this, it'll print these schools are not equal. Of course they're not equal, how it is better. Uh, notice, by the way, as a reminder, this uh, comparison is case sensitive. So school one is Howard, school two is lowercase Howard. If I run this code again, it'll still say these schools are not equal. They'll only be equal if uh, the capitalization matches. Now it says these schools are equal. Going back to um, working with strings, the next handy function I'm going to teach you is how to convert a string to all uppercase or all lowercase. So, so far, uh, a lot of our functions have been like we have a function name and then an open parenthesis, and we give it some sort of input, which we call arguments, and then a close parenthesis. Um, this is actually a function that's built into the string, and I'm not going to talk too much more about that. We'll learn about this later, about classes and class functions. But here, the way you use this is you have your string variable, and then dot, and then upper, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, or lower, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. Um, and you can do this either with a variable that is a string or a string literal. And so, uh, this is really useful for when you're taking input from a user that's a string, and you don't want to worry about, uh, did the user give me the right capitalization? Um, so maybe I have a little game that I'm making, which is guessing a word, and the secret word is bison. Well, if the person guesses capital B bison, uh, our previous code, the way we would have written it without using any special functions, would check whether bison is equal to bison, but capital bison is not the same as lowercase bison, and so our check would fail. But by converting both the secret word and the guess here to lowercase, uh, it doesn't matter what capitalization the person gives us, even if it's all caps, bison will still be equal to bison. Um, and going back here, I can show you how this works. So these names are kind of comparing all caps to all lower caps. There. I run my code, it says these schools are not equal. If instead of checking if school one equals school equals school two, I make both of them lowercase. Now, running this code will make it so that the two schools are equal because both of these strings will be lowercase. Um, again, this doesn't help if you put in a different school name here it'll still print not equal, even though they're both lowercase because the strings are just different. Now, the next function that um, I want you to know is called length. And this will tell us the length of a string. So len name, here we have a name that I picked, Frederick. Len name will give us uh, nine because there are nine characters in the, the name Frederick. This might be useful if you want to check, um, well, there's various things this could be useful for, and maybe we'll see them on our classwork when you come to class. 
Okay, here is a brand new concept I'm going to spend a little bit more time on. Um, this is the first time we're seeing square brackets in this class. And these square brackets are used to index into a string. Um, and so the number that you provide into these square brackets is called an index. Uh, these indexes are uh, numbers that represent each character in the string. And they, so we start counting from zero. And so the zeroth index in the string is the first character. The one index one is the uh, second character, and so on and so forth. And here on the right, you can see like f is the zeroth character, r is the oneth character, e is the second character, or index two character, and so on and so forth. And so name, open bracket zero, close bracket, is f, because that's the first character here. So we start counting from zero, zeroth character. And four, so name four is e. So this is that e in the middle there, f-r-e-d-e. -E. And again, counting from one, that's the fifth character. But in Python, we always count from zero for indexing. Um, maybe let's play with this a little bit. Um, these indexes, by the way, are going to be back in a few weeks when we learn about lists. So don't. Uh, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, how these might apply to lists too. But let's look at an example. So let's say we have some input string. Oops. Uh, word. Input. Give me a word. So if you provide me some, if I take in some word, um, I could say, okay, print your word starts with and then I get the first letter so the first letter is index zero if I run this I give it a word orange your letter starts with O and add a space so it looks a little better here let's run this again let's try a different word um, Keeling, like Dr. Keeling. Your word starts with a K. Well, we can also try indexing um, further in. So your word, your word's fourth letter is, and here's a quiz for you as you're watching, what index am I going to use for the fourth letter in the word? Think it to yourself. You might be tempted to say four, but remember, in Python, we can start counting from zero for the indexes. So the fourth letter is actually the uh, index three letter. So um, fourth letter is, if I run this again, Keeling. The fourth letter is L. OK, let's grab one more Keeling. We can look at the. Um, the um, let's see the last letter. This is another little magic trick. So in Python, if we index into a word, if you want to get the uh, start counting from the end, we can use negative numbers. And so um, if I do the last letter in your word is word negative one. Um, so when I run this, viewing, here it says the last letter is G. And so looking here, so from the front, the first letter is index zero, the second letter is index one, the third letter is index, so K-E-E-L-I-N-G. First letter is index 0, second is 1, third is 2, fourth is 3, fifth is 4, sixth is 5, seventh is 6. Or if we start counting from the back, we get negative 1 from the back. Then n is negative 2. Then i is negative 3. l is negative 4. e is negative 5. 
uh, that e is negative six, and this beginning letter is negative seven. You might ask, hey, that's kind of weird. So when we start counting backwards, we count from negative one, but when we start counting forwards and going forward, we count from zero. That's true, but part of the issue is that zero is kind of already taken. And so really the way you can think about it is it just wraps around. So starting from zero is the K, going forward kind of is E is one, but if you were to go backwards from K, there's no letter there. So instead we just go back around to the back and G is negative one n is negative two and so on and so forth. Only three from the end is word negative three. And I'll run this again and give Keeling as my word. So yes, the third letter from the end is I right here. I. Right. 